This weekend's luxury gaming event has come and gone, and we have all sorts of interesting information from this that definitely shows that, well, the metagame is shifting in an interesting direction, nonetheless. Make sure you guys smash that little grab out subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. So what you guys got up here on your screen is the breakdown for Luxury Games Championship 15. And the reason why I say that there were some interesting movements in the meta here, because this breakdown shows a little bit of a different story than what we saw from the early days of the three y or four YCSs out of this previous weekend. So the thing that does line up is Drytron is at a three of representation for this top cut. That shouldn't surprise anybody at all, um, considering that three of those tends to be the uh, the pushing point here for the metagame. Like, they make big boards. They're oppressive. That's fine. And we also have Triple Tri-Brigade as well. Same thing here. That data lines up with the rest of the meta. All right, they're the... They're basically two of the biggest bullies in, in the metagame right now that do what they need to do. So that's what we we see here. And then there were three praying kids in top cut out of top 16, which is also kind of interesting. Now, evidently, the meta decided that it wanted to shift gradually towards a point where players can explore these option trees with praying kids. I, I know, right? Option trees? You don't do Roxy's F. I, you normal summon a bunch of traps. Evidently, when I was hearing from some of the Prank Kids players, the trap cards were like the hard carry uh, for the weekend, which is kind of interesting. I've been hearing that a little bit more often, too. Evidently, trap cards are a good thing. Hmm. One card engines the deck. Typically, if anything happens to the normal summon Prank Kids, the deck just kind of doesn't do anything. But if the rest of the format doesn't really care, well, it's it's interesting, actually. Like... We're in a point where a lot of the other decks don't really care about wanting to play Solemns, which means that the Prank Kids Normal Summon should be resolving about 95% of the time, which basically will start combo and allow the deck to go. So I, I found that a little bit interesting as well here. And overall, the event was actually won by Prank Kids. Uh, we'll talk more about that here in a second. We also had two Dragon Link decks in Top Cut as well, which Dragon Link has needed a lot of time to evolve. And I, I typically say this uh, most of the time after something happens on a ban list here and something ends up happening to this deck. Um, you just got to give this deck time. I, once players find out how they want to evolve Dragon Link, then that's the point that you really need to watch out for. So typically you just got to give this deck a, a couple of weeks and players will start to test out the waters with this and we'll kind of start to see those key changes in the format, which definitely will go, hey, maybe Dragon Link has got its fair share of uh, chance now. So we will cover Dragon Link list here in a second as well. Uh, now, the Wanaroonies, ah, my favorite. So we had one adding Nister, I swear. People told me, in insert rant, that this deck is bad. It's the towers, man. Like, outs exist for it. I just, I, I, I hate the straw the out for it, but if, if praying kids in the one card engines are showing success right here, well, a, a basically unaffected large scale boss monster that can ruin players' days shouldn't really be surprise anybody as to why it's finding success. Uh, we also had one in for Noble in Top Cut. Now, here's a flashback to a previous format for you. The finals for this event were actually Prank Kids versus Infernoble Knights. And I assume later in the day you guys get the chance to see the Infernoble list do what it does uh, in full glory once the rest of the deck list are publicly posted. But I think it's very interesting because if if that much of a shift in the metagame happened, that Drytron and Tri-Brigade got oppressed this much by Infernoble combo and by the potential for Prank Kids here, that's just such an opening of the metagame that it's actually insane to me. Uh, we also had one Salamangre. In terms of Rogue, 
Salad, I feel like, is always going to be there. We also had one Sky Striker as well in the top cut. We also had one Virtual World. Keep in mind that what Virtual World still tends to set up and do in these metagame situations has remained the same. Chuchi Senshin is good, but the problem is the deck's best matchup is Tri Brigade, all right? And if Tri Brigade being the supposed best deck in the room isn't performing, then that means that the deck that's meant to counter it isn't going to do as much either. Obviously, you know, Macrocosming a Sky Striker player is a good thing as well, but it's in that really weird point. So this event taught us a couple of weird things here. Like I said, Praying Kids doing much better, I think is very interesting. When it's, uh, I guess, a higher caliber of play, uh, it's very interesting. I believe the, what was it? I believe the Praying Kids player went 11-0. We'll cover his list here in a second, though. And to see that Infernoble pushing out here and getting the chance to do something. He heck, man, even getting adding Nister to perform in the metagame, showing people that, yeah, Rogue is sitting at the dinner table right now, and it is making splashes to this. Meanwhile, you know, the big decks that were projected to be bigger doing things. Dragon Link is finding innovation in the format right now. And like I said, the format is evolving at an alarmingly good, quick pace. And that's a very good thing to be seeing with this game right now. So I want to pass it on over here for some deck lists. All right, the first list we're going to be looking at here is his, I know his Facebook name is John Germany, so I'm just going to put it as that because that's what I was messaged. He said, hey, Robbie, I won first place at the LCS this week. And I was like, ooh, piece of candy. We got the Underworld Goddess down here. So you can link out for, you guessed it, the good stuff. In terms for that trap love, we have the Thunder Dragon Fusion because... You know, this guy is, in fact, Thunder. I think it's been a little while since we've seen Thunder being seen play here. Uh, so many hand traps to counteract the threats of the metagame. Uh, Ghost Bell is seen kind of as plays a little bit of a one of. I think is kind of adorable. Uh, the extra deck looks pretty standard. Then we got this little tech here. Blizzard, target one face up spell trap card your opponent controls. This turn negate the activated effects of that spell and all spells on the field with that original name. If the targeted spell be sent to the opponent's graveyard, is added to their hand instead. Hmm. This is a quick play negate. It's kind of kind of saucy, actually. But in terms of, like, other crazy stuff to point out about this list, I don't really see too much. I think pranks might be something that I think a lot of players will try to play more of, but outside of that, there's nothing that screams too interesting to me. All right, next up here, we have the Virtual World list from Rafael Reich. This was Matus Alves's top 16 list here. Uh, I'm actually very happy to see that this deck did good. We have the Gamma package in here. Again, the chance to see some love for Skullmeisty. All right, ooh, we got a Break Sword down here as well. I see we're doing Cloud Castle shenanigans again. It's been a little while since I've seen this. I think the thing that stuns me most about this list here is we are not playing Kaliga, Muddy Mud Dragon, any of that extra stuff here. We're just choosing to not explore the options of that, which definitely opens up some interesting doors. Instead, we're choosing to go down like Hyperton and so forth like that. So this is a very different approach to Virtual World as of this moment. I think that this build actually changes a lot of the current mindset that has been produced by the metagame. So maybe, maybe with the thought of cutting Muddy Mud and Kaliga and, you know, the extender packages like that, and going forward, we'll maybe see some different things. I'm not sure, but this is interesting. Next up here, this was Nicholas's Dragon Link list from this weekend. This was on the DB Grinder. I grabbed it so we could include it in this here. Zombie Stein, by the way. Two level 8 dark monsters. Once per turn, during either player's turn, detach material from this card and send one face of card from your hand to the graveyard and the target one face of card opponent controls. Change that card to defense position if you do. Negate the effects of that card. This is a 4500. So you're basically telling me now that we've gone down a different approach here to this deck. Now we can make bigger, badder monsters. We have triple sphere mode to push out things here. Uh, we're still doing tidings and chamber plays, but it looks like they got the formula down here with, you know, the loss of LP and, you know, one striker now. So I think looking at this on paper that this feels a lot more, uh, I would say, natural. This, this looks pretty standard for Dragon Link. And the last list I have for you guys here is another prank kids list. See, this is top 16. This was Hashim Musta... Uh, yeah, 
Hashim's list here. Uh, we have no Thunder Dragon Fusion in here uh, from the first place. We have m one more Imperm, which is fine. We've extended out more Ghost Bells, uh, uh, difference from the first place list. We are still doing Instant Fusion shenanigans, which is fine. I feel like this extra deck doesn't... I feel like playing too many of this, but I kind of feel like that's fine at the end of the day. A little bit more standardized um, in terms of things like... I would say if you look at a Praying Kids list that this is the basic structure and that's not necessarily a bad thing all right so nothing else too much to say about this but this is praying kids the weekend for the luxury game so what do you guys think please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think smash it up and subscribe and subscribe and you guys don't miss out more awesome content i'll see your beautiful faces back here later on there's some more cool awesome content peace out guys have a good one thank you patrons for making the ride never truly end without you guys support well I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.